This is Queensland arrowroot. We're going to show you how it grows in our garden, how to harvest it, how to cook it, and tell you what it tastes like. This is Queensland arrowroot, otherwise known as Canna edilis. It is a beautiful foliage plant, but also the bulb or the root is edible. Uh, people can use it as a uh, starch. Uh, instead of cornstarch, they could use arrowroot starch, or they could also be eaten like potatoes. So we're actually going to thin it out and harvest some of the roots. It does not like our frost here. Uh, it will turn brown, and if it dies to the ground, no worries. You just uh, wait until the spring and it'll come back up. The plant can also be used as chop and drop, and it could be used to cover the ground or use as mulch. And p other people that have animals use them as fodder for their pigs or for chickens. Such an incredibly useful plant. It's not only beautiful, but very useful too. Love it. So here I am cutting the stalks low using a Japanese style sickle just so that I can have easier access to the bulbs and the tubers. And now we're going to clear the mulch away from the clumps so that we can get our spade or our shovel in there. And some of the uh, clumps are really big. So sometimes it's nice to have multiple tools to, ax to be able to get them out. Divide the clumps if it's too big, just to make it accessible and sometimes you can feel it in the ground where the bulbs are. And if they're small enough, you can easily pull them out. This is our harvest. I planted this entire clump here in the springtime with about this size clumped or maybe this size clump. But either way, it's much less than what we're actually um, having right now from the harvest of that one clump. Take a look at this beautiful bulb. So some people uh, like the younger shoots because it's more crunchy, but other people, they like the older ones um, because it's got more sugar content, it's got more starch, so it tends to be sweeter. So, but isn't it beautiful? The root itself is beautiful. And when you plant this in the ground, it will take off in no time, especially here in Florida zone nine. It may die back to the ground, but it will thrive in the springtime. And you can take a look at another clump that we have that will show you what it may look like in the winter uh, over there. But just because it looks a little down, a little ugly in the winter, don't, don't you fret, it will come back and it will flourish in the springtime. After harvesting the bulbs and tubers, uh, hose them or wash them clean as you would potatoes or carrots. Cut them to manageable size. Uh, you want to cut the bulbs and separate them from the tubers. So to cook them, uh, bring hot water to a rolling boil you want to put in the tubers first, then after five to eight minutes, put in the bulbs. So the cook time uh, for the tubers would be 20 minutes. So this is our boiled arrowroot. And I'm going to show you how I peel this uh, boiled arrowroot. So I picked out this um, particular piece because it has both the bulb and the tuber. Um, and because the taste is going to be slightly different and the way you peel it is going to be slightly different because one is more fibrous than the other. Mm. 
I'm going to put the bulb to the side. Very fibery. So that's the bulb. And we'll start with the tubers here. So I just peel it like, I guess, potatoes in a way. So th this tuber actually has fibers also, but it's not as stringy as the, um, the bulb. So that one's done. Set it aside there. Get rid of this. And I get it as close to the um, flesh as possible without getting too much. And there's some parts where it gets, you can feel that it's hard. So you want to remove that hard piece. And what you want is the, um, the softer uh, flesh without any of the fibery materials. Now this is the bulb. And the way that you're going to peel it, you'll feel that it's, it's much more stringy. So it can kind of just peel off. And you don't want to eat the string, so it's best to just peel it off like this. And it feels more mushy than the tubers. Yeah, it feels more mushy. It feels like a very well-baked potato or well-boiled potato. So put the bulb on one side, peeling it off. Yep. There you go. Yep, texture is definitely different from the bulb versus the tuber. Ooh, this is a little harder. Alrighty, so here we are. We have both the bulb and the tubers. So now I'm just going to cut it up and ask Jonathan to taste it because he's never had arrowroot before and we're going to see how he likes it. So we've got a pear plate and we're going to ask Jonathan to taste our arrowroot. Like I said, he's never had arrowroot before and it could be eaten two way, both as a savory dish, as a potato substitute or as a dessert. And so we're going to ask him to taste it and see how he feels about arrowroot and which way he likes likes it. So go ahead, Jonathan. This is the bulb. So all right. So which one do I do? So taste the bulb first. Just like that. Yes, taste it like that. Okay. Now, once that's done, I would like you to taste the tuber because there is a difference. What are your thoughts? Okay, the bulb is like an unripe potato. It's a little nasty. It's got it's got like this weird, it's like a potato with a really weird, almost like carrot green flavor. It's very strange. It slightly feels like overcooked potato, but it's fine. Okay, the, what- The texture is a very well boiled potato. Yes. And this one has a much better texture Mm -hmm. It's a little more crunchy. It's not quite as mushy, for lack of a better term. I have lots of texture issues. If something is mushy, I'm not eating it. This, so this is less mushy. It is also doesn't have that weird, funky, unripe bitterness to it. Yes. So this is much better. Yes. And for me, I kind of feel that this texture, this taste is a cross between potatoes and water, water, crust nut. 
chestnut, water chestnut. Water. Okay. Yeah? No. Because of that crunchiness. No, I'd say the texture of this is more like a... Between a potato and an undercooked yam. But <laughs> but it doesn't taste like that. This tastes better. Yes. And, and it's very potato-y. Okay. If you can't get potatoes, this will do fine. Yeah, so this is where you can eat with your meat, you know, as a potato substitute. Without anything on it other than maybe salt or pepper. However, you can also eat it as a dessert. So what I prepared here are... Um, Basically, it's sugar and ground up sesame seed with a pinch of salt. Roasted or not? It, it's uh, pre-roasted. Okay. And then this is um, coconuts, uh, shredded coconuts, um, un unsweetened shredded coconut. It's better if you can get f freshly scraped coconuts, but we don't have that. So I'm going to give a sprinkle for both the tubers as well as the bowl and see what you think. Uh, whether it tastes better with the sweetness on it, with the sugar on it, with coconut, or whether you prefer it plain. There you go. Which one? Which try try this one first and see what you think, whether it improves its taste. Can't be much worse. It's better? No. No, that's that's still wrong. I mean, it's not terrible. Trust me, I've eaten things that are way worse than that. But that's not something I would choose to eat if I had a choice. Okay, now taste the tuber. It's a little fibery. You can remove the fiber. That's weird. It's, it's like someone put sugar on a potato, and that's just not right. So you prefer the tuber plain? You know, I would probably honestly prefer the tuber with butter. Oh. If this is what we had, I would treat this as a potato. Yes. Like, completely. Okay. You could mash it, I assume. You could crush it, you could put butter on it, you could serve it with bacon, cheese, whatever. It's essentially a potato. This is like a sour potato. It's, it's not good. Okay. Uh, that's it. So there you have it. Jonathan's first taste of arrowroot. And you could eat it um, like here, the way we prepared it. Or you could use it as a, like I said, a, a thickener um, in substitute of cornstarch. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Yeah.